when I go to these kink events, there's a lot of really intense sexual energy, low lighting, people making sounds that are very visceral. There's a lot of stimulation. That feeling fascinated me. When I can find that feeling and I can like trace that emotion, that visceral emotion that I get, it needs to come out very quickly. And so in a lot of my work, you can see like with the tape and the, the glue and the rhinestones and the knots end up very close up looking almost a little haphazard, a little bit urgent, a little bit messy, dirty, but still elegantly balanced on the walls in a very specific pose. I'm Michelle Rushfeldt and I'm an artist and a sculptor. I started painting very young. Um, I started making things, being creating, and never really great with numbers, never really interested in science, never really focus in on anything else other than creating content for a visual audience. You know, I was a synchronized swimmer, an athlete, for 25 years, but also I grew up very Catholic. And so um, a lot of the things that I'm thinking about now and the work that I'm making now is very much in opposition to my upbringing of Catholicism and um, I guess the, the shame that comes along with organized religion and, and how it perceives sexuality. I lived in San Francisco. I was getting my undergraduate. I started dating one of my current partners. So we started getting into a lot of kinky shit and it has become a lot more so lately. But what really inspired the artwork is the performative aspects of the role playing that comes with a lot of exhibitionistic sexuality. And for me, these works become bodies playing these roles. So they're more, um, they're being forced sort of to hold these poses. So it's almost like they're being dominated by me. They're being forced to kind of balance in these precarious, difficult to hold poses. This is a example of sometimes how I use more literal sexual objects, kink objects. My goal with those objects is to be able to incorporate them without having them be the entire focal point to the point where the rest of the sculpture becomes arbitrary. I have my rhinestones, anal hook, leather, tape, and they all, all of these come together, these materials, to form this sort of elegant posed figure. People don't particularly love it when women are able to express their sexuality in such a vocal, aggressive, open type of way. People did have a hard time talking about this, the subject that the work was getting at. They would talk around it because they're embarrassed. You know, it's something very personal. And then they kind of have to imagine me in a lot of these positions. <laughs> and, and then they have a hard time with it, which is understandable. Red is a color that I find myself drawn to quite a lot with the rhinestones and the steel and the more kind of dirty um, rust welds that embody the kind of dirty beauty that I like to get into. As an art handler, sometimes I go to a lot of my clients' houses and you'll see the same 10, 15 artists. The artists that are hot in the upper echelon of the art world right now, it's usually about 15 artists. And so that can be a little frustrating, but I have to keep in mind, other artists have to keep in mind, women artists have to keep in mind that 
there is a lot more opportunities than there used to be for people of specific genders, people of specific races, people who would like to have opportunities that are specifically for them as opposed to the white, male, cis, hetero group of artists that have been previously. These are paddles that I have deconstructed and made essentially useless. So they're being forced to kind of almost be submissively like humiliated into these non-useful situations. And they're also being pushed off the wall in a way that really is just making them kind of present themselves in these forced poses. I'm constantly finding myself getting into loops where I'm second guessing the work that I make and then get back on the, the straight line of making the artwork and not think and not over plan. The best work that I make is when I have no plan. These are the times when I actually make these things that are good or interesting or help me move to the next thing. It's very hard to make a living as an artist in New York because it's so expensive to live here. I definitely have to work very hard to live here. I work a full-time job. One of my partners who I live with also works a full-time job. And you know, it's, it's a struggle. It is worth the struggle to make what you need to make. And if you need to make the art, then Absolutely, it's worth the struggle.